has to get done and how to do it better. Is that just a player's thing? Or is that, or was that a... I, was, uh, I was on the other plane. Yeah. There were discussions on that plane, too. Uh, you know, just uh, obviously we had a really rough offensive night and, and really hadn't, outside of the second half of Oral Roberts, probably hadn't done that really all season. And we did it back-to-back -back halves. Um, we had a stretch in the first half where we scored one basket in 12 possessions. A stretch in the second half, we scored one basket in 11 possessions. And, you know, those kind of droughts when you're on the road, I don't, I don't care how well you're playing defensively, you're just not going to win. Uh, so while we did some good things defensively, offensively, we certainly didn't have it. I thought especially in the first half, especially early, uh, you know, the shots we got the first 20, 22 possessions of the game where it was 13 to 12 or whatever it was. I mean, there's shots I would take every game and most times we're going to be up 25 to 12 in those situations. And fortunately, our defense kept us in it that long. But, uh, you know, we had some breakdowns late in the half and they were able to create some separation. We were ne never really able to get back in it after that. Played through Justin a little bit there. I mean, when the offense wasn't finding a good flow, what did you see out of the possessions where you kind of made an effort to get him a touch in the post? And well, I, obviously they were good, and we've got to get him more touches. And, you know, two things have to happen. When we're struggling, he's got to get down there. Mm -hmm. You know, he likes to float once in a while. And then we've got to make sure he gets a touch and then play out of it once it, once he gets down on the block. Because he's, he's crafty down there, and besides being able to score over both shoulders, he's a very gifted passer. So. Uh, you know, he's, he has to become a more focal part of, of our offense moving forward. I think that's been obvious in the three games we've played uh, without Maurice to this point. How do you balance um, patting him on the back and kicking him in the butt at this point? Because this is probably a fragile point of the season. Yeah, it's, it's a fragile time just for these guys. You know, you're asking them to do things they haven't had to do. And, and, and obviously, it's going to have to happen. Uh, that's the bottom line. It's, it's going to have to happen, or we're going we're gonna to see too many days that we don't enjoy as much. So it's, it's, there has to be some, certainly some demanding that goes with that, but there also has to be a lot of encouragement. And that's a, that's a fine line to walk as a coaching staff uh, to make sure that these guys understand what they have to do, that, it's, that the, you know, our, our expectations are clearly defined for them. Um, and that they're doing it with confidence, yet they have to be held accountable if, if they're not. So uh, when you don't have as many guys on the bench, it's a little harder to hold guys accountable because you don't have you don't have a lot of places to turn. But this is a group that cares. I think they care about each other. They care about this program. Uh, they want to get the ship right as quick as we possibly could. The reality of it was we probably weren't going to win every game this season. Uh, and we're in the middle of a tough stretch right now. We just have to fight our way out of it. Zach talked about, Zach talked about not letting offensive struggles affect defensive play. Uh, is that something that you're going to hammer on them? Yeah, yeah, and it's 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 difficult for this group because our offense has been so efficient. You know, we've scored, you know, probably well over 50% of our possessions on the season. So you always have that little extra boost of momentum or juice because you scored on the other end, the crowd's into it, you're fired up. Uh, and when you don't score from multiple possessions, it can be deflating, and we haven't had to experience that much this year. Uh, teams that play a little bit more of a grinded out style experience that all the time. That's not how we play. Uh, so we, we have to get better, and like I said, for the first, I would say 15, 16 minutes of the game last night, we did a good job of, of, of having our defense keep us in the game, hoping that we get one of those offensive spurts. Unfortunately, it just never happened. How do you work Kyrie? And Marcus through this shooting something. Yeah, again, it's to. it's preparation. It's it's doing the extra work, and and they're going to do that. And then you, we just have to remain confident in it. You know, we we would not be 18 and three uh, if it weren't for those two guys and their ability to score baskets for us, both for, both from the three point line and going to the rim. So the last thing I want them to do is is, is to become tentative. Uh, now we have to eliminate a couple rush shots. Uh, there's no question because those hurt us a little bit more now than they did before. Uh, and we'll, you know, we'll address that in the film room this afternoon. Two more. As you're taking you know, that's something outside of the basketball, how good is it to see a guy like Zach making you have to step back? Well, Zach's, having Zach back is good on a couple fronts. Number one, it gives us a physical presence, not just in games, but in practices. You know, somebody to go against in practice that, you know, poses some of the same challenges we see in games. 
And, and then secondly, his voice has been really good in practice. He's, you know, obviously a guy that's missed two months. He's, he's eager and anxious to get back in the playing floor. So he's not going to have a bad day. You know, he's going to approach it with a lot of enthusiasm. And, and that enthusiasm is, uh, you know, it's, it, it's going to spread to the rest of the team. It's contagious. So uh, it's great to have him back. Hopefully I um, haven't talked to him whether the foot responded well uh, from, uh, you know, from treatments and playing a little bit last night. But uh, it's great to have him back. What are the challenges the fall will present? Uh, you know, Billy Garrett does such a great job at the point guard position. You know, he plays with such great pace, and he's got size, and he can see over top of you, and uh, he makes he makes a lot of the right decisions. And then Eli Kane's having a great year. You know, one of the more improved players in the league. Uh, so, you know, they've they've had some games where they've been really close. Obviously, at, at Villanova, they've come as close as anybody has uh, on the road at Villanova, and, and they had Butler down 20 the other day. And, lost in overtime so and they've been sitting there a week preparing for us probably licking their chops after watching us play last night but um, you know we're, we're gonna have to be ready we're gonna have to get our crowd into the game and, and to do that we've got to play with a little little more enthusiasm than we did last night most schools do have some pink out or cancer uh, you know obviously it's important to me on a personal level having had my wife go through it 11 or 12 years ago uh, but it's it's been really cool to see how our community and our, our campus community has embraced uh, you know this event uh, we raised over twenty six thousand dollars in the auction uh, we'll, we'll obviously raise some more money at the door uh, Saturday afternoon but um, you know it, it brings attention to something that's really important and that's the need for early detection in the fight against cancer and uh, that men and women when when those checks checkpoints come at different different points in your life um, that you, you need to take care of it and you need to you need to be responsible enough to do the right thing for your body and, and, and monitor uh, your body as you get older and uh, you know my wife's an example of someone that caught it early and, and 12 years later she's doing great because of it so there's a lot of great stories like that and I, I'd like to hear a few more of those uh, as we move forward and if if uh, if all the pink in the crowd and everything that goes on as a result of it uh, is if one person goes and gets a check because they had forgotten about it and this this brings it to the forefront of their mind and, and they catch it early and they cure it then that's what we do it for and obviously we want to raise some money so we can continue to fight cancer we've lost some some dear friends this last year one of them used to be standing here in this huddle with us every day that i that i miss every single day uh you know we've got to find a cure for this disease uh so guys like piff can be around a little bit long 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 ride home very quiet uh Tell a lot of guys, you know, I had something to say. Not nothing negative, but you know, everybody wanted to say something positive, like, "Yo, we can do this." Everybody has something to say, but uh, uh, when we landed, everybody, you know, they said what they had to say, and uh, we're gonna, you know, try to turn it around and practice today. Was that like a group meeting type thing, or was it informal? Formal? Um, Did was it we, like, hey, let's air some stuff out? Uh, no, we really didn't, you know, plan on none of that. It was just, you know, it, it was just, it just happened. You know, uh, we were all just on the plane, and everybody kind of talked it out. And uh, just say, you know, we still got a few games, what, 11 conference games and stuff. So uh, we're just going to try to, you know, stay true to ourselves. Do you have any idea that the shooting could be that far off? You guys have been on all year. How big of a surprise was that? Um, we, we, we had a lot of open shots, you know, even during the Marquette game. Uh, it was just about uh, making them and uh, shooting with confidence. I feel like... Uh, Everybody can kind of get in the gym a little more and uh, shoot, including myself as well. And um, that's that. Is shooting contagious, even good or bad, shooting contagious? If one guy's missing, it kind of rubs off on the uh, other? Or is that not, the, is that not I, I don't see it like that. Um, but it kind of, you know, if one guy makes a shot, then the other guy probably step up like, oh, I'm going to make it too. Uh, so I don't think it's real contagious, but you never know. It could be. Do you see this as kind of a crossroads? I mean, a lot of people, as much as people were loving you a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. right. you know, I, this is a bit of gut check time for you guys. Right? Yeah, it, it really is. Um, everybody knows walks out. Um, a lot of people kind of, you know, down us. You hear it all over and stuff. We won't be the same without him. But uh, as a program, you know, we got to, you know, just be ourselves and, uh, you know, prove a lot of people wrong like we, we've been doing since, like, the first 15 games and stuff like that. So. How big is this one Saturday then against DePaul? Um, uh, it's real big. Uh, we'll see what we were uh, made of. You know, it's just all about preparation and uh, everybody having the will to win, you know, and just kind of maintain that lead we had at the beginning of the season. Mm -hmm. Do you have to maybe be more aggressive, or is it more of a fact that like, guys just have to do what they were doing and 
it will come back. I, I would say uh, you, you kind of nailed it. I, I have to be probably more a little bit more aggressive. But then again, it's not all about me. Uh, everyone else, you know, had to do their part and uh, probably do it a little better than what they did now that, you know, Maurice is out. Um, and, you know, everybody just got to, you know, have the will to want to win and still have that fight, just like if Maurice was still there, you know. Uh, uh, any, have you been touched by any issues? Like uh, that? Not yeah. really. Uh, Piv, you know. Yeah, Piv, yeah. I really like Piv a lot. Yeah. So uh, that's who I stood up for and, uh, you know, did that's all of that for. It's kind of cool because everybody at some point in time yeah. sure have gotten touched by mm -hmm. that. It's kind of a new thing that you guys are doing and wearing the pink. And yeah. You guys as players look forward to something? Uh, some guys do. I, you know, I mean... I don't really care. And not to say I don't care about, you know, yeah, those who, who's okay. been, you know, diagnosed with it, but uh, it's just another game and we got to go out here and win. We need this win. Uh, I mean, it was pretty good. Uh, I mean, for it being the third day playing basketball, uh, I mean, relatively it felt good. I mean, I felt like my timing was just a little off, but I think with the more days of, you know, practice, I think I'll just exponentially, you know, get my rhythm back and you know, just kind of get back to it. When so. did you get officially cleared then? Uh, it was kind of a fast process because I kind of started doing a lot more stuff last week and it just it was really feeling good. I wasn't having any negative effects, like no swelling, no pain. Um, so I just kind of kept progressing from there and, uh, you know, just reacted really well. So. What, uh, what do you think you can bring? Uh, I mean, just kind of the same stuff I did before. Um, you know, just kind of on offense and then kind of just a, um, you know, kind of defensive voice and presence kind of down in the lane too. But um, I think not just me individually, I think me and Z and Cole and Marcus and some of the older guys now that, you know, we don't have that voice that Watt brought. Um, you know, I think we all as a collective, you know, need to do a good job making sure, you know, we bring everybody with us, keep everybody on the same page. What happened defensively? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely excited about it because you know I was, uh, you know, I was, I was pleased with how I was doing uh, before I got hurt. So um, I'm definitely excited about you know just being able to help the team out on both ends of the floor, uh, and I think you know just with today's practice and tomorrow's practice. Um, you know, I'm just expecting to get that much better, so. What happened defensively, maybe towards the latter part of the first half last night into the second? It seemed like you guys were prepared for what they were going to do as far as the cutting and screening and things like that, but you just hit kind of a lull there. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, before, obviously, we lost WAP, uh, you know, we were doing all those scouting report things that we needed to do. Um, you know, we were being where we needed to be on defense. We were, you know, coming with a, an edge and an energy on defense. And, you know, now that we obviously don't have him, it's not an excuse on that end of the floor. So, you know, I think we're letting some things affect us that don't necessarily have anything to do with defense. Um, obviously, we're disappointed with the last two games, but I think at the same time, I think these are two good wake up calls to be like, okay, like obviously, we're not, you know, happy and feel bad for Maurice and what happened to him. But, you know, now it's time to sober up a little bit and, you know, figure out what we need to do and get it done. Because I don't think anybody wants to feel like there's something we could have did that we didn't do. Mm -hmm. given, that the, given that the offense is, I guess, kind of regressing to the mean a little bit and the defense is going to have to pick it up. I mean, you talked about it, Max talked about it. How important is it to make sure you guys don't let a bad stretch of offense affect you on the other end of the floor. Yeah, and I mean, you know, we kind of talked about it last night. Before, you know, our offense had so much spark to it. So, you know, when you string a few great possessions together on offense, it's easy to bring energy on defense. I mean, everybody knows that. But, you know, now that we're going to have to play with a different style on offense, we can't allow our offense to set the tone on defense. Because there are going to be times maybe where, you know, we're not necessarily getting the shots we want or making the reads we want. So we have to change it to the fact that our defense fuels how we're playing more than our offense does. And that's not something that's easy, but it's something that we're definitely capable of. So we just have to put our mind to it and get it done. Are you surprised at how quickly you've been able to cover? 
Uh, I mean, I'm definitely, uh, definitely pleased with it, but, uh, you know, I think with, you know, the trainers we have and the doctors we've had, um, they've obviously done a great job helping me out. And then kind of just, you know, with my knee and with my ankle, you know, it was just kind of the idea that, you know, I just had to set my mind to it and, you know, do as much work and rehab, you know, kind of behind the scenes and on the side as I could do to prepare myself to come back.